Hello and welcome to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show number 226 for Sunday the 9th of September 2018. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to the Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my good friend Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. I'm back. Hello. How are you? Long time no chat, missus. I know, it's been amazing, but <laughs> but freakily weird because I've not had my good buddy to talk to every day. And I think this last trip has been the first trip where I haven't constantly messaged you because I just literally didn't have time to breathe. Well, you were a very busy lady. Anybody trying to keep up with you on social media? I think I gave up at one point, to be fair, Michelle. No offence, it wasn't I didn't want to. But, you know, I couldn't just, I literally couldn't keep up with you. Well, I felt at times I wasn't sharing enough because I had issues with internet. But I'll, I'll talk about that later. Oh, OK. But, but yeah, the, the three-week trip was sensational. It had Good. its peaks and it had its troughs. OK. And it had a massive learning curve. But it was, I am so blessed and so lucky to have been able to do such a fabulous trip with the most amazing people. Yeah, I mean, we always say this about Disney, don't we, about the people that you spend the time with is just as important as the attractions and goodness knows what else you're doing. And the fact that on this trip you've been able to hook up with people that through this wonderful medium of social media and podcasting, you would never otherwise have known. I've now adopted... (laughs) <laughs> Kat as my unofficial sister okay and Lewis as my unofficial big brother I'm, even though I'm older than him he's my big brother because he's a bit wiser <laughs> than me at times but yeah just hit it off with those guys you would never have thought that we'd never met prior to meeting up on the first Wednesday of the week's trip in Walt yeah. Disney World because we had such a scream we really really did Cool. Uh, I think anybody following you on um, Facebook and Twitter, Michelle, would would recognise that you guys were having a blast. We totally did. They totally led me astray. Well, um, yes. And I'm sure that will be covered at some point or other. It will. It will, (laughs) my lovely. We have got so much, so much to talk about. So much. And Mm. I don't even know where to begin. Any ideas, Jane? Well, I think because it's something that that you've done for the first time why don't we talk about the cruise element yeah yeah that sounds good how's about that because I know it's something that's brand new for you I've never done it and I'm sure there's lots of people out there that are contemplating going on a Disney cruise I mean they they sound amazing but are they actually as amazing as we all perhaps are thinking they are well do you know what I'll do Jane Mm -hmm. I will talk about it in some detail because there were elements that were sensational and then there were elements that we weren't as impressed by oh okay um and i think the beauty that of me personally is that you know we don't get anything from disney at all we are totally impartial and if something's amazing i will say it is and if something isn't up to what i think disney aspire to be then i'll say that again because i'm totally impartial and if i do get any sort of like kickback or anything bonus it i always say so and I mm. haven't on this trip whatsoever at all. No. I didn't even waste my time getting in touch with Disney Media and saying I'm doing X, Y, Z because I wanted this to be my impartial opinion. And then, obviously, it's my opinion. There were, what, over 4,000 other people on this cruise and I'm mm. sure they have got different experiences and different stories to tell, but I will share mine. OK, that seems fair enough, Michelle. Where are you going to start? At the beginning? <laughs> well, I suppose I'll put my hands up and say, oops, it, Michelle nearly didn't get us to the cruise line. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah. Um, we decided a while back that we didn't want to take the Disney Cruise Line transfer to get us to the port because what happens is the current people on the Disney Fantasy get shooed off by about nine o'clock in the morning from about half past seven onwards to about nine o'clock hmm. and the staff then work like crazy to turn it around and they start letting guests on at about 11 o'clock in the morning right we decided we wanted to be one of the first guests on board 
Okay, yeah. Because I'm from Yorkshire, I want my money's worth. <laughs> yeah, go on then. So we thought, well, if we go with Disney Cruise Line, they don't get you there till about one o'clock. And I thought, oh, that's not getting Shelley her money's worth. Right. So what did you do instead? We planned to get a private transfer. Right. And we looked round and we we looked at reviews and we decided to go with Star Transfers and it was left on my shoulders to book it. Right. And it, they went first, you know, to pick me up and Stephen up at the All Star Resort and then the plan was to go over to Cat and Lewis and pick them up from Animal Kingdom Lodge. Mm-hmm. They were picking us up at nine o'clock, so our ETA at the cruise check-in place was about ten o'clock. And when we'd done our online check-in for the Disney Cruise Line, it said we could arrive by about half past ten. So I thought we were doing okay. Yeah, bit of allowance and everything, yeah. Come five to nine, Michelle just had a panic attack and thought, oh, should I just check the uh, booking because nobody's turned up for me yet? Okay. We were staying at All Star Movies. Yeah, and what did you put on the booking? All Star Sports. Oops. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> we originally had booked to stay at All Star Sports. Right. But I didn't kind of, yeah, anyway, I'm a Wally, sorry. <laughs> but you got there okay. Got there obviously. fine. Um, I, I managed to go to the front desk and they rang the people that we were getting the transfer from. They rung their driver and he whizzed round and all was good. But I did have a very tense 15 minutes of me banging my head against the wall saying, <laughs> I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid, I can't even book a, a transfer properly. <laughs> but you got there the time you wanted and everything. We did, and I must admit, after doing the return trip with Disney Cruise Line, the personal private transfer on the way there was sensational. You know, we had an air-conditioned SUV, we had charging ability for our mobiles. We had air conditioning. We didn't have to put up with anybody screaming and shouting or anything. It was just mm. perfect. And we got there. And at the roadside where we got dropped off, there were porters. Now, the porters, I believe, don't work for Disney. They work for independent for the cruise terminal. Right. So they handled our baggage. And we just gave them a few dollars tip. And from that point, we didn't see our bags again until about 4.30 that afternoon. Right, okay. Because they magically took them away for us. That's good then. So even though they're not Disney employees, it all kind of just works because it's the the cruise port. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What we had to do then is we had to get into line and we went through the cruise terminal building for Disney and everything in our hand luggage was screened and x-rayed right okay to make sure that we weren't taking anything on board now disney have some very strict rules right okay yeah i suppose their x-ray as well is making sure there's nothing going on board the ship that shouldn't do yeah would be detrimental to anybody's vacation time absolutely yeah so we went through and then you go into this massive big check-in hall and it was about the size of about four football pitches it was huge right And there was two different areas, I believe, if I remember rightly. First-time cruisers and people who'd cruised before. Mm -hmm. And you go and check in and you get your your room key. Okay, so you get that on on land, so to speak. Yeah, Um, because Stephen had cruised before, he was Mm -hmm. classified as a silver cruiser. If you've been on at least one cruise, you're classed as silver so many others you get gold and then so many others you get platinum and you okay. get more perks depending on the level that you're at. Oh, right, so it's like a loyalty scheme, yeah. 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 Now, on this card, it was our room key. Mm. It also told us where we had to be for the muster drill because everybody on board the ship before we set sail has to yes. do like a safety practice called a, a muster drill. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It also had a dining rotation. Right, okay. Of which restaurants we were going to in which order, what our table number was. And it also, we had a little card telling us what time we could actually get on board the ship. Ah, okay. So you were told when when you could get on, yeah? Yeah. Now, our time, I think, was 11.30 in boarding group four, whereas Cat and Lewis was in boarding group 10. But because we were travelling together... 
we all sort of went together with our time because our time was the earliest. Right, okay. And while we were waiting, we went and had a picture taken with Minnie Mouse. Oh. And literally, by the time we'd done all of that, it was time to get on board the ship. Right, so no hanging about then, really? No. No, no. Oh, I missed out one stage. We had to fill in a health questionnaire saying that we hadn't had any coughs or colds or tummy upsets, handled animals or that sort of thing that, you know, would cause a problem to people in a a cruise ship environment. Well, yeah, I suppose because you're in a... You're all there together, aren't you? Sort of thing in a, in a restricted environment. You've got to be careful about bugs and things like that. Yeah. Um, we all carried with us our swim gear and some bits and pieces, our valuables in our carry-on luggage. Some people had like pull-along suitcases, some people had rucksacks or a big handbag, you know, so we had everything mm. ready and our plan was to go straight to the adult area and check it out. Ooh, okay. So there's adult only area then, is there? Yeah, there's two places you could go. There was Deck 13 and it had a little pool called Satellite Falls personally we found there a little bit too windy so we never really went up there our Mm. preferred place was deck 11 by the adult pool and there was a bar and it was supposedly adult only you used the word there supposedly i must admit at times the kiddie winkles did use it as a little cut through ah okay um which did get slightly annoying i must admit because my idea of adult only means no children adult only yes quite you yes know, that wasn't strictly enforced the kids were able just to use it as a cut through to get to the children's area which was the other side of the funnel with the big you know pool and the big screen on the back of the funnel mm. the pool area was amazing they had a very shallow bit which you could technically sort of lay down in and there was a misting station then there was a small but deep pool bit Mm. and then there was like a seated round circular bit where you could sort of dip your feet into the water but it was a bit deeper yes got you yeah out of the whole time we were there i never felt that pool to be crowded oh that's interesting because there's a lot of people on board that ship there's a lot of people on board it's not a massive area but i personally didn't find it a problem even on the days we were at sea right so that was good cat and lewis went to the bar and we were able to have a adult beverage and just mm-hmm. sit in the pool and chill and relax. Nice. Now, at that point, you could then start touring the ship. The children's clubs were all open house, so you were able to go and explore. They were offering tours of the spa and the gym. Kat and myself went and looked around the kiddie areas. And the boys decided to look around the spa and then they went to obviously go and have a look at the part of the children's club that had the Marvel and the Star Wars areas. (laughs) Very sensible. Yeah. (laughs) To be honest, I did go through everywhere and including the It's a Small World Nursery, which, oh my word, I want to hang out at because it was so (laughs) cute. I was a little bit... Maybe my expectations were too high, but I personally felt that the children's areas had lots of screens and lots of seating, and I didn't actually see anything going on. Now, obviously, it was open house, and the the people who were running the club session, the kids' sessions, were not there doing bits and pieces, but for me, I just saw lots of screens. Right, so... The worry there is that they're not actually getting into any interaction. It's just literally plonking them down in front of a screen, which you could do anywhere. Now, I do gather from looking at the ship's navigator, which was something given to you every day and it told you what was going on, there were lots of things doing. I personally mm. didn't see. So I'm just saying what I saw. Yeah, yeah. There was this whole big thing about you can go and be the captain on the Millennium Falcon. And Stephen was particularly excited about this. <laughs> okie dokie big kid yeah yeah it was a bit of a letdown to us because for our level of gameplay it was it was like star tours where you were sat but you didn't have really much control over it right okay so it it didn't live up to the boys expectations should we say but is it aimed at a obviously a, a younger group well yeah obviously because it's the kids club but <laughs> uh, i just i just i don't know maybe i I 
think this was the problem. I'd heard so many amazing things about it. My expectations were sky high and the right. delivery was a good product, but it wasn't what I was expecting because I was expecting the gold pixie dusted cherry on top type model. Mm. That sort of, I wasn't as amazed with. Right. Um, after that, we went and got unpacked in our rooms. The suitcases had turned up. Mm-hmm. I can wholeheartedly say the room was amazing. So what sort of room did you actually have then, Michelle? Because I, I understand there's different levels, isn't there, and stuff? Yeah, I booked a navigator balcony room. And what that ba- basically means, and there's not that many navigator balconies on the ship, is that if you imagine your sort of balcony, it comes with a deck. Yeah. Part of that balcony may be obstructed by the ironwork of the ship's exterior design. Okay. For the room I was in, I lost maybe 10% of the actual view. So for me, it was nothing. Yeah. It had two chairs on the veranda and a table. It was perfect for sitting out and watching the scenery, having breakfast out there or a late night snack. Mm-hmm. Having that to me was able to connect me with the exterior without having to mix with everybody else. Yeah. I imagine if I would have gone, say, with my partner rather than a friend, it would have been utilised more. Yes. Okay. For, for this trip, I don't think I used it as much as I could have. Right. The room itself was split, I think, into three zones. As you go in, there was a separate toilet and wash basin. Mm -hmm. Then there was a shower over a small bath and then a sink. So you have two separate sort of bathroom areas. Okay, To the left-hand side, we had two double wardrobes and inside there was also a safe and some storage space. And then you went into the bed area. Mm -hmm. Now, the bed area was a double bed and then to get to the, the third area, there was like a modesty curtain that could be fully drawn or pulled all the way back And there, there was like a big dressing table and a two-seater sofa, which flipped out into an additional bed. Right, okay. And Stephen chose to have it made up into a bed the whole time. Right, okay. Now, obviously, we were there for three weeks. We had a fair, fair few cases, but the big double bed had plenty of storage underneath to wheel the suitcases. So, to be honest, I felt the storage was fantastic. There was loads of places to put things. Because that would be my concern, because the perception would be that because you're on a cruise ship, you're going to end up with a smaller room, if that makes sense, you know. I would say it was compact, but there was sufficient area to fully unpack my case and put my belongings out, and it was fine. So compact but well designed. Absolutely. And I didn't feel crowded because I, I was always able to get that daylight coming through from the veranda window. Yes. So basically after that, we thought we'd go to the sailing away party. I think for me, if I ever do a Disney cruise again, this is a one and done thing. I wouldn't probably go to the next one. No? It was okay. Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Chip and Dale and some Disney dancers, boy oh boy, dancing at 4.30 in an afternoon, cooking. I'm not kidding. They were amazing. Don't get me wrong. But for me personally, I wouldn't see it again. Okay. I'm not the sort to get up and start dancing and whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll get you. Yeah. Oh, and sorry, before that, we had the mustard drill as well to do, which yes. we had to go to our designated point. They made sure everybody was there and then you were able to go back on with your day. So right. after that, we went and had our first meal. Oh, and where was that? We had our meal in a place called the Royal Court. Ooh, that sounds push. It was, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about what I ate on every single meal, but I will say the following. We had first sitting, and that started at quarter to six. Right. It is frowned upon arriving late. Oh, okay. And we didn't find this out till, like, day three. They opened the doors about 15 minutes beforehand. Oh, okay. So were you were you on first sitting then every... Was that your rotor, was yes. it? Yeah. Now, okay. I'm contemplating, if I ever go again, to go to second sitting, and I'll explain why. All right, okay. About 7.30, as the restaurant was emptying out, they put the full dining lights on. Oh, okay. And then started stripping tables. 
And you know when you're having a meal and you want to be a little bit leisurely and be able to have a coffee and unwind? Mm. I didn't get that feeling. It was like, come on, you've had an hour and a bit, get out. Yeah, I have to say I've I've been in restaurants in the UK before where all of a sudden you can smell the cleaning fluid as they're starting to clean up around you. Think, hold on a minute, I'm yeah. still eating here. Yeah, that not sort good, of took not good. the shine off it a little bit from us. So yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that was something that we later mentioned in some comments. Right. So that basically was it, and then we went to see some entertainment. The entertainment on the ship was amazing. We originally only thought we'd go and see the big Disney shows. Mm. We thought, oh, well, there's, there's a variety act on tonight. Oh, I don't know. We loved it. He was yeah. fantastic. So funny. And he also had a show later on in the week in one of the lounges. And he just made us split our sides with laughing. Oh, that's good then. Yeah. So that basically was our first experience on the cruise ship. So did it set you up well for the rest of Because you were there, how many nights did you do on the cruise? We had seven nights there. So was that a good a good setup for those seven nights? Yeah, it was. We sort of started to get our, our bearings and being able to navigate our way around the ship. And I must say, the room I chose was literally deck nine. And all I had to do was walk past maybe five rooms. And I was at the stairs stroke elevators go up two floors, I was on deck 11, to, straight to the spa and gym or the adult's pool. It was fantastic location for me. Cool. Because my, my concern always with the cruise would be, would, would, would there, is there enough to actually do on a cruise, if that makes, you know, is that element of, because you're in, in a confined space. I know it's not a very small space, mm. as in the ships. I don't think you appreciate how big these ships actually are until you're on one of them. And that's always my kind of, because I can't visualise in my head how big these things actually are. Mm. There's that element of, is there going to be enough to keep me occupied for the duration of the cruise whilst I'm on this floating vessel? We didn't do everything, I'll tell you that. Really? Now. Yeah. Uh, cool. So there are things I didn't get to do. We had two days at sea and I didn't go off all day on the port days either. But there was just so much to do. Right, okay. Well, maybe I can sort of go on to one of the listeners' questions. Okay, okay. So we've got um, a few actually concerning the cruise. I think it is one of those things where it's not something that a lot of Disney fans have done before. So let's have a look. So Paul Tawanaki has asked whether it was better to visit Disney World before the cruise or after it. Oh, for me, having a Walt Disney World cruise sandwich was brilliant because we did a lot of Disney... And then on the cruise, we unwound and then we went back to do a lot of Disney. Yes. For me so, personally, I would do Walt Disney World, then cruise. Right, okay. Because I went full pelt at Walt Disney World and then on the cruise, it's just like, and exhale and yeah. rest. Because rest. everything is done at a different level. Right. Now, some people might prefer to have the unwind and then wind themselves up going round the parks. I suppose it's a very personal choice. Yeah, I must admit, I kind of like the idea of manic followed by chill. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I did relax completely on that cruise. So then, kind of leading on to Paul's next question, did anything actually surprise you about the cruise, or about being on the cruise? I suppose this links to what I was saying a little bit earlier what surprised me was the food. Okay, what, the quality? Kind of. I had in my mind that I would not do cabanas, which is the onboard ship buffet. Yes. I was like, buffets are not for me. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go to the dining room every time I possibly could to get it, the food delivered to me. And I was so surprised at the quality and the freshness and the variety and everything about cabanas i loved it right i totally thought i wouldn't like it at all but the ability to go in and choose and cherry pick the plate of food for me yes. was ideal if i wanted to go in and get a plate of prawns i could get a plate of prawns yeah if, yeah. I, if I wanted to go in and have some fresh fruit, maybe a little bit of carved meat, maybe some vegetables, I could do that. Whereas with if you're ordering from the restaurant, 
they bring you what is on the menu. So if the meal was steak with parsnip mash, that is what you got. Yeah, then there's a chance to change it. Yeah, but if you didn't like it, they would bring you another option because they always came and said, do you like this? And one night I'd ordered something and it wasn't very nice and they brought me something else. Right. Because it comes as is, the only thing you can sort of alter on it is how you prefer your meat cooked. Yes, yeah. So you can't say, can I have the steak but no carbohydrates? You can't do that. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, we weren't able to anyway, should I say. Mm. Um, Like we'd heard people have said, oh, we got five of everything and whatever. The novelty kind of wore off a bit. (laughs) And the food was very samey and... There was nothing that I would turn around and say, wow, that was spectacular. Oh, okay. It was nice, but you've got to bear in mind these restaurants and kitchens are catering a a large amount of people to get fed in such a short time. I wasn't overwhelmed. It didn't help that we had three nights at Animator's Palette. Right. And our table location was right in the middle next to where the waiters went and got their plates from and scraped all the leftover food. Ah. So it wasn't very magical and we couldn't really have a good view of any of the screens where the action was going on. Yeah, so a bad location would lead to bad experience yeah. then, isn't it? Yeah. And we, we just felt that when we got there on an evening... People would arrive after us, but leave before us. Oh, okay. And maybe it was because they had children and they were trying to get the children through the meal quicker to get them off to the kids' club. Maybe they just let us dally over our meal a bit longer. But we felt at times we were kept waiting a little bit too long and we wanted to sort of get in, have our meal and get off to see the show. Right, okay, yeah. And this is where I think in future trips... I would probably go down, try each restaurant out the once, but the rest of the time I would probably eat at Cabana's so that I could eat and choose what I actually wanted to eat, eat. and not have the experience of feeling rushed. And I'm assuming with the Cabana's, then could you, was that a bit more free flow as to when you could go and eat as well? Yeah, it was open a set period, not a long period, admittedly, but it was open and you could just go and get what you wanted and found, find a table and go back and get... Yeah, more food if you wished. Yeah, so that would be more conducive to being a bit more free flow, I suppose, with your whole experience. Yeah, and I suppose another thing that I learned on the cruise was that you don't have to go in a ball gown every night. You know what I mean? It can just be as informal as you wish. Yes, there's no 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 expectations. Yeah, and admittedly, some people did dress, particularly on the formal night. We had some very OTT attire, um, and but we also had people who just wouldn't do that, and they were fairly informal in their casual attire. Mm. And that didn't distract from those that wanted to dress up, so to speak. Not really, no. For me, it didn't anyway, because it was just all about what suits for you on the cruise. If you wanted to dress for dinner, you could dress for dinner. Yeah, nice. So Paul actually also says, what was actually your favourite parts for the cruise? What stood out? What was your best bits? Oh, gosh. I think interactions with cast members. Classic Disney then, yeah. We had some amazing cast members on the cruise. Guest services, Fabian, oh, my word. Whenever I went to talk to him, he would have me in hysterics. He was such a cool cast member, really really friendly really Mm. helpful in the stores colin oh my word colin was fantastic every time i went in he remembered me and we had a little chat um brilliant cat and lewis got chatting to you know they noticed people that was from australia and they (laughs) they just zoned in and they got chatting to a cast member called mallory Mm. and they sort of mentioned about being podcasters Mallory arranged very very kindly of us to have an exclusive visit to the technical hub of the broadcasting side and the entertainment side of the whole ship oh wow you know they have a proper recording studio on board cool and we got to see the bit where all the entertainment offering and the CCTV was so when the shows are on, this is the sort of entertainment hub and where yeah. all the live feed for the TV goes and everything. That was just amazing. Nice. So we, we were very sort of honoured to be able to do yeah. that. And the views, because the broadcasting hub 
looked out from the top of the funnel sort of area down onto the aqueduct so it was such an amazing view yeah i bet now obviously we couldn't take any pictures because it was classed as backstage but no but we were able to take so, pictures yeah. of the view and that was fantastic nice little added bonus um what else was outstanding the upgraded meals that we had at paolo and remy were sensational mm-hmm. and i'll talk about them in greater detail at a later point because they were amazing Right, okay. And again, we had fantastic cast member interaction with that. I just felt like I was a little princess when I was eating in those restaurants. Oh. Yeah. But we did, you know, we did fun things as well. Um, And one of the fun things we we did, and I suppose this is one of the best experiences, so it kind of links in. And I know Shari Thompson has mentioned this about being quite keen to go on a Disney cruise and she is wanting to go as an adult. Mm. Shari, oh my word, there is so much to do if you are an adult. And I suppose kind of going on that lines is the fact that obviously there are children on board. That doesn't disrupt from an adult-only enjoyment side of things. No, because as I mentioned already, we have an adult pool area. With the pool, there's also to the side a side of shit hot tub type thing. And you can literally look out of the glass straight Mm. into the ocean when they say hot tub, it was like, oh my word, it was hot enough to boil an egg. <laughs> it was so hot. In fact, it was too hot for me to get in with sunburn. But apart from the sort of like sunbathing area and the pool area, there was places you could have adult beverages. <gasps> and for research purposes, I had to research every single one. Did you really, Michelle? I did. <laughs> And I will go through a few of them and sort of explain the sizing of them because some of them were quite big, some of them were smaller and more intimate, some of them had different alcoholic beverages on offer and the main thing is that they catered purely for the adults. Right, okay. I suppose my second favourite one was the Skyline Lounge. And I'd heard a lot about this place. And right behind the bar, they have screens. And every, I think it was 10 minutes, the screens change from a different country's skyline. So we had London, we had Paris. And when they bring you the menu, it's an iPad, a tablet. Ooh, snazzy. And the drinks you can order can match the country that is on the skyline. (laughs) so you're literally drinking your way around the world then yeah now you don't have to um i personally didn't partake in a a beverage there cat and lewis did but the servings were incredibly generous for about eleven dollars you'd get a pretty hefty drink and it was a very small intimate feeling place i'd say this room for about 30 guests on big comfy sofas Mm. It was a little bit darker than the other lounges, so it was very snug and there was like a an imitation fire and it was a place where you just wanted to go and snuggle up to your loved one and have mm. that alcoholic beverage and have no idea what time of day it was. <laughs> that means you can drink at unacceptable hours then, doesn't it? Absolutely, because during <laughs> the day you could go and have tea or coffee. It was just brilliant. And as you sat down, they came and brought you a serving of nuts so you could have some nuts and some bits of fruit, etc. I loved it there. I thought it was fantastic. And I was going to say, where else did you actually go then? Another place that was there was called the Cove Cafe. And the Cove Cafe was right next to the adult pool. But what tickled me is, you know these space pods where you press a button and a glass panel in this sort of like cylinder opens. Right, yeah. When you walk through, the door behind you closes and the door in front of you opens. That's how you got into the Cove Cafe. And I felt like I was Doctor Who going through to a different <laughs> teleportation land. <laughs> and and this was sort of a an indoor sort of place where you could get a tea or a coffee and they had some cocktail teas as well so one of them was a wild strawberry and basil tea Mm. or you could have signature coffees you could also get champagne they had a full bar they Mm. also had pastry offerings and the pastries were free but if you wanted a coffee or whatever obviously there'd be a charge for okay yeah 
okay, that's, that's quite it, cute though. And it was nice if you wanted to use the adult area and all of a sudden want a nice coffee rather than the standard coffee you could get on board in the beverage station, which was in the kids' part of the pool. You could go in there and have a nice beverage and sit in nice sort of lounge chairs. Yeah, away from it all. Yeah, so that mm. was a handy place to go to. And a top tip was they have little coffee cards and if you got so many stamps, you got a free coffee. Yay! So that was, that was nice. Another adult lounge area was called La Piazza. Uh-huh. And... This, to me, was not a successful place because to get to some of the other bars, you had to walk through La Piazza. So it was a bit of a thoroughfare. Uh, right, yeah. But it was sort of themed around like a merry-go-round. So it was okay. a circular bar. And right. it had like couples booths that looked out into the central part of the bar. It wasn't very big. I'd say you probably could seat maybe 50. Right. And it had some like little bistro tables. We did a couple of adult quizzes in there. Um, and just outside that area, in the sort of lounge big zone, there was adult only snacks served at about quarter to 11 on an evening. So, you know, little things like samosas and spring rolls and different chefs in the restaurant would provide the food on a different night for it. Oh, nice. So La Piazza didn't really hit the spot with me personally, but hey-ho. Currants is um, an open air bar up on deck 13 adult only so if you wanted to go and sit upstairs and have a drink on an evening or daytime there but there wasn't really much else going because that was sort of outside right yeah i suppose a favorite one was the tube right okay and this is a nightclub and it's sort of set in piccadilly circus around about (laughs) 1970s london and this sort of like pods that resemble being on a tube with the bars at the top and the handles to hold yourself up if you're standing up. Okay. It was really groovy in there. There was a big dance floor, a lot bigger. This is the biggest one, I imagine, in the whole place apart from D Lounge. D Lounge was for family. This was just for, you know, the adults. Right, okay. And I loved it. It, it was so cool in there. There was red telephone booths and... <laughs> You know, it it was just a fun place to be and we went for quite a few adult-only quizzes in that area. Yeah. Um, There was O'Gills, which is like a Irish sports bar pub. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's kind of what I would say is an American Irish pub. Not an Irish pub, but an American Irish one because there were big flat-screen TVs. Now, this, you can order some food from there at a charge. It was supposed to be adult-only, but when we were there a few times, we did see children in that one. Right, okay. So maybe when you're eating or up to a certain time, maybe children could go in could that go one. Could go in, I don't yeah. Know. yeah. Uh, we did some quizzes in that one as well. Another one, which I didn't actually have a drink in, but I went in, was Meridian. And Meridian is a lounge in between Remy and Paolo. Mm-hmm. And it's very ship-like. You know, it's got the woods and it's got the leather and it's... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's meant to resemble the sextant, which is the old navigational yes. tool that sailors used to use. So there's a bit of brass and it's really beautiful, really beautiful. Some lovely hints and nods to Walt Disney in there as well. Mm. So I suppose if you were wanting to go to eat at Paolo and Remy, you could have a, a drink Master there all. before or after. Yeah. There's an outside area as well. Um, and I believe that you could have a cigar and take it outside and, and smoke it there. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one, which was just off the main atrium, which is the big furrow there where a lot of the character meets went off and it was over several floors, mm-hmm. was the Bon Voyage lounge. And when it says it's a lounge, it's just basically a bar at the side of a thoroughfare and I personally didn't go in there because there was people constantly walking through the whole time. Oh, okay. Now, my favourite I've saved to last. Okay. And this is Ooh La La. Right. And this is with Champagne Bar. Ooh. Now, we did a champagne tasting in here and there's a piano and sometimes they have live musicians, maybe a violinist or a pianist, yeah. And you could have champagne cocktails, you can have champagne, 
and as I say, we did the champagne tasting. And nice. The room is decadent. It's beautifully decorated. It's small, you know, mm. very small, very comfortable, very Victorian in its feel with velvet tufted walls and gilt mirrors. It had a lovely fleur de lis motif adding around. It was just French. Louis the Fourteenth chaise long type chairs. It was just beautiful. Sounds very elegant. And to be honest, you could get a champagne cocktail for about thirteen, fourteen dollars. Perfect. The champagne tasting we did again. I'll talk about in more detail on a later show. But that was about forty dollars, and that was such a bargain. Nice. Absolute bargain of the century. And there was one lounge I've not really mentioned, and that was D Lounge. And that was the family lounge where everyone was welcome. I never actually stepped foot in there. <laughs> it's where you could go partake in the bingo and do karaoke and that sort of thing. And to me, that's not me. So I never went in. No, that sounds very much more, for, as you say, for families to do, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and it was yeah. a really big lounge. I'd quite easily say quite a few hundred people could sit in there, enjoy the entertainment. And it's nice that it's there, but I personally preferred other places. Yeah. Well, it sounds like there's an awful lot of different places to actually choose from. So you you kind of have got the, that variety to go, go around, haven't you? Yeah. So you, on top of all of that, there are some shopping areas. Oh, like a bit of shopping. And if you want to be a little bit decadent on your shopping, there's a Tiffany's. <gasps> I know. And the staff there, we were served by a lady called Beth and she was amazing. And they're more than happy to get things out of the cabinets for you to try on. And it's, <gasps> it's not high pressure sales either. You know, we went in several nights trying things on and playing around in there and... They didn't push you into buying anything because I went in a jewellery store in one of the parks and I felt really pressurised to buy something. But in Tiffany's, it was just beautiful. You could just go in, try something on, have a look. Because we were dining at Remy one night, we got a special invitation to go and have a a, a glass of champagne there. Mm-hmm. And, you know... Verve Clicquot Rosé Champagne while you're trying on things in Tiffany I don't think <laughs> life gets any better Did you buy anything though Michelle? I didn't, I had Willplower Jane <laughs> Although I was very very close <laughs> Very close, there was a stunning necklace that was just me but unfortunately the old bank balance would not allow Yes, I would imagine that might be a slight stumbling block in Tiffany Yeah, but there were the shops as well and providing that we were at sea the shops were open and you could wander around and again it wasn't high pressure sales it was just come in have a meander have a chat with the cast and then as i say the evening shows were brilliant mm. yeah. the lounges all had different offerings on you know there was some oh you know adult entertainment in some of them and when i say adult i don't mean that kind of adult. So don't be thinking it's all ooh la la, pervy pervy <laughs> stuff. I mean adult entertainment where perhaps the language would be a little bit more yes. choice and mm-hmm. the content would be for a, a mature audience yeah. rather than a family audience. Yeah. And we enjoyed that and we did a fair few quizzes in there, Disney quizzes. We were so blessed to have Stephen because we did one music quiz and they played like a little excerpt of a Disney song and you to guess what film it was mm. from and what it was called. Well, Stephen has got a fantastic memory for this and literally they played two notes and he knew what it was. Oh, my God. And we got 29 out of 31. And the, the only reason why we didn't get full scar was because one of them was from High School Musical. He knew it was High School Musical, but he didn't know if it was one, two or three. <laughs> and he didn't know the name of it. And <sighs> we all got medals for that and it was good fun. <laughs> so, yeah, there's so much to do if you're an adult. So much. You know, there's the Midship Detective Agency, which isn't just for kids. That was fun. I never got to do it. I know Stephen did it chilling out on the deck there's the gym oh my word the gym it's good is it getting up i i tended to wake up about half past six and i used to love going to the gym and i don't know if you saw this or not i posted a little 
review of the gym on the podcast page and it was meant to be you know me being a serious podcaster talking about the gym and I'd just Mm. been and I'd done a little run and worked out and I felt really good and I sat down and within like 30 seconds I was reduced to a quivering (laughs) crying wreck if you haven't seen it it's still on our Facebook page for the moment I may delete it with embarrassment (laughs) because seriously I was meant to just talk about the equipment and how I how surprised I was you know there was staff in there walking around with a cooling towel there was water coolers with lemon scented water or iced water you could pick up fruit it was very hygienic you know there were sanitizers to wipe down the equipment when you're done and there was a lot more equipment than I actually anticipated but to be on a treadmill and look out to the ocean as you're doing a little bit of a run Mm, it was sensational and I think for me the reason why I got so upset it was the first time I had actually been in a gym and felt like I belonged to the mm. club. Because up to now, I've, I've done a little, I've dabbled, but actually, on that first day, I actually ran. And I ran properly, and I feel like I did a workout where I wasn't the token fat girl in the corner, just mm-hmm. trying to do three steps on the stepper machine and passing out <laughs> in a puddle of sweat and redness. I actually felt like I belonged in there. and. Yeah it was quite an empowering moment for me because it was like wow all the hard work I've done has paid off yeah yeah Um, a lot of people went and just used the showers there as well I imagine if there's four of you sharing the showers there were beautiful and it had all Elemis toiletries that you could sort of use right yeah shower area which was fantastic next to the spa gym area was also a little smoothie bar where you can go personalize a smoothie with all sorts of fresh fruits and additives and things which a lot of people did but I didn't no but that that was brill and then the final bit if you want to be exercise crazy on a cruise deck four you can run laps around the ship oh okay I did laps around the ship Yay! In fact, I enjoyed it so much, I did it about four or five times because to be able to run and see nothing but ocean was brilliant. Uh, yeah, w- weird, yeah. And yeah. I did two miles one night and I am astounded to say that one of those miles was 5 minutes 46 and the other one was 5 minutes 52. That's why I felt like I belonged because... Yeah. That's a bloody amazing time. Yeah, it's good on you, girl. So I loved it. There was just so much for me to do on this cruise that I literally didn't have time to do everything. And I was so ecstatic about it. I've booked to go again. You have booked to go again? I have. Have you? Yes. <gasps> I just couldn't, but not. They offer you 10% discount on the on the boat and a $200 gift card for room credit as well. And I can change the date I've booked any time within the next two years. Oh, okay. So so when have so have you actually booked a date? Well, or? you could just book something called a placeholder and get oh, okay. in touch with Disney at a, a later time and arrange it. Or you could book a specific date and ship itinerary and Mm -hmm. i've gone with the eastern caribbean for next august and if i get to next may when i've got to pay it Mm -hmm. and i don't have the money i can just change it for the next year oh okay and it's and that's that offers like valid for two years yeah that's not too bad then i just had to because i i loved it and i felt that i had so much disney value from that I had to do another one and go around the rest of the Caribbean. Yes, because obviously this is one western side, wasn't it? Yeah, and there's so many parts you can do in the Caribbean. And I haven't even begun telling you about Castaway no. Key or the other things, but I think for today, I think that's just me saying, if you're an adult, go to the Disney Cruise Line because it is amazing. And as I say, I will talk in a later show about the adult only dining of Paolo and Remy because mm. that's adult only and oh <laughs> so do you think I've explained the cruise line as a big bit of a taster to people that what do you think? Do I need to say anything more? 
I think you've whetted our appetites, Michelle. There's so much I can say, Jane. You know, even the lady that was our room hostess, a lady called Air from Thailand, she was amazing. Little towel animals on the bed and little chocolates every night. And she was lovely. If I'd go and say to her, oh, would you mind doing this? She'd do it. Could I have some of this? She'd do it. Well, here's just one question for you. Did it feel as Disney staying on a, on a cruise ship as it did, say, staying in a resort hotel? More so. More so, okay. Because the character interactions were fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. I've never met so many characters in different outfits that I'd never met. Pirate Knight, I met Pirate Stitch, I met Pirate Mickey, there was Chip and Dale, and each day they seemed to have a different character outfit on, did the characters. Right, so yeah. The, and they'd say what time they were meeting. So you could get in line in plenty of time. And I never got to a line and find it closed. I always got to see them. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was fun as well. Um, And that added to the Disney touch. But just going around, you'd find a hidden Mickey. Or you'd have a Disney artwork piece on the wall. Mm. Or you'd have an interaction with somebody, a guest or a cast member that made it Disney. And I think because you were on this ship people were more willing to talk to other people than they would have been in a theme park. Because in a theme park, people are very, got to get to this attraction, got to do this. People were a lot more relaxed. Yeah, and I suppose you you recognise that you are there for a certain amount of time with these people, so you are going to potentially see them again, aren't you? Whereas in a a park, it's like, oh, I'm not going to stand talking to you because I won't see you ever again. I have to finish with one story. Now, this made my cruise. So, this particular day, my travel buddy, Stephen, was nowhere to be seen. And I wanted to go get lunch. So, I thought, oh, I'll try out Cabanas. It was the first time I'd eaten there. And Mm -hmm. I wandered around and I got my little plate full. And I was wandering around the tables and I thought, I don't really want to eat on my own. Um, Hmm. Oh, there's a lady there sat on her own. She looks English. I'll just introduce myself (laughs) and say, do you mind if I join you? And she had a lovely table looking out to the ocean. And she was lovely. She said, oh, come and join me. And we had a chat about weight loss and how she was loving the seafood there. And we chatted over our dinner and it it was beautiful just to be able to walk up to a complete stranger and Mm. chat because we had something in common. We had our love of Disney. Yes. And you was never short of something to talk about with that. Absolutely not, yeah. So later that afternoon, I was in the elevator with Kat and Lewis and we walked in and got into the corner. I said, oh, I'm going to go into the corner. And right opposite me was the same lady and I feel awful. I've forgotten her name. I feel <gasps> so bad, but I will find it out. A voice chirped up, you're Michelle. <laughs> and I I thought, oh, the lady must have told her daughter that I was, you know, that I'd been chatting to her at lunchtime. Mm. I listen to your podcast all the time. (laughs) And I was like, seriously, I'm on a ship of 5,000 people in a foreign country. Yeah. And I bump into a listener to the podcast. I was like, sweet. oh, my word. It was only the lady's daughter who I'd had lunch with. Oh, how weird is that? So then I said, oh, do you know Kat and Lewis? And she says, yeah, Uh I listen to your podcast too. (laughs) And I was like, oh, my God. And she said, well, I kind of knew you guys were going to be on the ship, but I didn't want to pester you and and sort of say hello or anything. It's like, oh, please do. Yeah, yeah, let's go get a picture. So... Emily and her wonderful son, Alex, hello to you both. You really made my cruise by the few times we were able to bump into each other and say hello. Emily, you are going to hopefully come on the show and have a chat about your field of expertise in the next week or so. So we need to make that happen. But it was just, I've bumped into somebody on this ship who listens to the podcast and I was like... (laughs) It really did make my trip because I thought, so people do listen to the show. (laughs) Those numbers don't lie to us then, Michelle. (laughs) I know. It was just so weird because I suppose with my accent, it's fairly, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I've got an accent. Everyone says I have, but I don't think I have. I suppose. I I think you could be described as being distinctive, Michelle. Well, that's what Kat and Lewis said. And, (laughs) you know, they sort of said, well, it just stood out from everybody else. 
So, yeah, I love that. I thought it were yeah. absolutely spiffing. So <laughs> I'm going to end the show on my little bit of two minutes of fame of someone <laughs> saying, oh, I listened to your show. And I got really giddy over that. I really did. I thought it was <laughs> Bless <fun>. you. <laughs> so, love it. So that's basically Disney Cruise Line in a nutshell. Um, I am going to talk more Cruise Line in the next coming weeks because there's so many things I want to go through and I think I won't do it justice in a five-minute part. No, no. Um, And then we'll get on to the Walt Disney World part as well or sort of intermingle it all in between. Mm, yeah. So I suppose I'm just going to finish off the show by saying, please, 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 if you haven't done already... If you wouldn't mind leaving us an iTunes review, you know, make Jane and I go a little bit all weak at the knees of your <laughs> wonderful comments. We'd love that. Yay. You can also get in touch with us. Please be interactive with us on Facebook because Facebook have these really, really weird algorithms. And if we oh. don't get any comments on posts, not everybody who follows the page gets to see them. So please just leave a little comment saying, I love that picture or, oh, that that sounds nice or anything because we you know it's a two-way thing and we really want to know what your guys opinion is because we may have very different opinions but they're all valid and we all want Absolutely. to hear from them and then the last thing i am sort of going to mention is i know while i was away i posted some videos to our patreons mm. over on their special facebook group these mm-hmm. are the people who pay a few dollars each month towards the upkeep and the running of the show. And I did a few bits of Disney magic for them. You know, one or two of them requested postcards, so they got postcards. They might still have a bit more magic coming their way, so I'm not going to say any more. And um, if you want to look into that a little bit more, it's patreon.com forward slash Disney Dream Girls. I will be posting some of those videos and a few of the bits continually on our main Facebook page, but... I just wanted the Patreon people just to have it a little bit earlier than anyone else yeah. because, you know, they support us and I just thought it was a nice thing to do. Yeah, we appreciate the support, don't we? Absolutely. And, of course, I've been sharing via Instagram and Twitter at this Dream Girls. And uh, no doubt this weekend when I get to recording the Avengers, there might be some things about the trip on there too. <laughs> But I suppose until next week, Jane, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me.